Coulter, a member of Team Hercules at WPAA-TV. Tonight, I'm honored to be speaking with Stefania Munzi-Logos, art teacher, freelance portrait artist, and first-time children's book author. Good evening, Steph. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. What first got you into art, and when did you decide that this was something you wanted to pursue as a career? If you're the one kid in art class that, you know, all the kids kind of gather around and everybody wants to see what you're working on, and, um, you know, that was always me. Ever since I was in elementary school, I really loved just drawing. Um, and art is something that, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, you know, you could put like 10,000 hours into something and you just get better and better at it. So it was something I always loved doing and it was just natural for me to practice it, you know, over and over again. So it was very clear from a young age that this is something you should do for the rest of your career. I know there was a time that you weren't making art. Could we explore that a bit? Sure. I'm an art teacher in Hartford. I've been teaching for about 10 years now. And before I was in Hartford, I worked at the Grove School. It's a therapeutic boarding school for children with severe emotional and behavioral issues. My teaching experience has kind of been all over the charts. So, you know, it's been with a variety of kids. But when you're painting and drawing every day, it's not the first thing you want to do when you come home. Um, so there definitely has been like a lot of gaps you know, in my life where maybe I just haven't really been making art recently. Like I, you know, I've just had the time and I had the inspiration to kind of, I don't know, go with my work, you know. And your work is so powerful and it's very personal. So would you say that when you started including your son in your artwork and you realized there was a need for special needs artwork out there, was that how you found your niche? I went through like a lot with my son. I had a miscarriage before Joseph. That, you know, started the whole journey like just with a lot of anxiety and everything like that and then while I was pregnant with Joseph I had something called preeclampsia which it, it's very dangerous and it's like life-threatening we both actually almost died during his birth preeclampsia raises your blood pressure up really high to a dangerous level and then it starts affecting you know all your organs and things like that so I, I had gotten pretty sick they had to induce you know my pregnancy with him it didn't go so well it went it went pretty bad actually and we ha I had to have an emergency c-section Joseph ended up having to spend like two weeks in the NICU, which for any parent, that's probably, that was the most traumatic part. It, you know, it affects you. It, it really does. And I know for a lot of artists, like trauma is kind of that, that pushing force that makes you want to create art. And, you know, having these experiences really is what drove my art. You have to have a, a hearing test before you leave. And Joseph failed. I had a feeling there was something wrong with his hearing even before the hearing test, because the condition he has, it's called microsia. So what it does is it affects like the outside appearance of the ears. It, it's a tiny ear. It's small. It, it didn't form properly. He doesn't really have an ear canal. He has like some pretty profound hearing loss on that side, which resulted in him having to wear a hearing aid called a Baja. It's a bone anchored hearing aid. It looks like a headband and it sits really tight on his head and it vibrates like the bones and it kind of transfers that sound into his inner ear because his inner ear, everything inside his head works. There's an issue with the sound carrying to his inner ear because his ear canal never formed properly. So this was a lot, like having all of these things kind of happen at once. So it really made me want people to kind of just understand what I was going through. Because I personally, I don't like to feel isolated with my experiences. And I like to reach out and I like to see if I can connect with other people, other special needs parents. I've been a teacher for 10 years and that's enough time you just see a lot of kids. I've never seen anybody wear a hearing aid like Joseph. So when people don't understand it or don't know. I, I kind of understand it because I don't think I would know why he was wearing a headband and what he was wearing if I didn't have a child with that condition. Right. You mentioned previously that a lot of artists use their work to cope with the trauma that they experience and the circumstances in their life. I'm sure that might have been a little bit easier through the actual artwork you were doing for this book that you wrote about your son. But what was the process of actually writing it? because it's you've written and you've illustrated your own book. It's kind of a funny story, really. Honestly, it all happened by accident. I had the time to kind of create this artwork. I had the inspiration. It was my son. Really what I wanted to do was I wanted to do portraits and I wanted to sell artwork. And I, I also wanted to spread awareness about my son's condition. So I started like offering my services to the hearing loss community on social media. I was just posting pictures of Joseph wearing the Baja, wearing the hearing aid. Mm -hmm. My son wears a hearing aid. If your kid wears a hearing aid, I would love to do a portrait uh, of your child wearing whatever hearing device they wear. It got pretty popular. A lot of people responded to it. I got a lot of work and it was more than just children with hearing loss. I've met so many different kinds of special need parents, children that have autism, 
Uh, I've met parents with children that have cerebral palsy, even children that are very sick. I've done portraits of children with cancer. Um, I did a memorial portrait of a child who actually passed away from cancer. And, it, you know, it, it really just gave me the opportunity to reach out and meet people. And from that, you know, I ended up thinking about creating the book and I ended up getting on the news. I was on Channel 3 with Nicole Nalepa. Um, and after that transpired, I was able to, to get a publisher. The book just kind of came together. So did you write the book after you wrote the words after the Channel 3? Or did you have the whole book together at that point when you went on the air? With I had like a lot of the artwork done. I had an idea. I had a, like an outline and a plot. Publisher that I worked with is actually Alphabet Publishing in Bramford. They really helped me create more of a storyline, really helped me like promote just hearing loss awareness. I really just wanted to educate people about what my son has, uh, microsia atresia. Briefly mentioned it, but the publishing story that you have is pretty incredible. So would you like to kind of talk a little bit about the timeline of all of that? Cause it's, it's really insane. A lot of people are telling me, you know, it takes years to publish a book. I, I kind of just went into this blind, like I really didn't know it took years to publish a book. I just wanted to really sell art. Yeah. I wanted to do portraits for people. You know, I have my art business. It's called Designs by Stefania Francesca. I just drew a lot of pictures of my son and I think he's cute and I want people <laughs> I, I want people to know what he has. It just went from there. It kind of it had a life of its own and I I've been going along for the ride and it's been a great journey and I'm I'm really happy with the, the work that's transpired oh, from it. That's so great. So where do you plan on going from here? Is, is there any other books in your future? I would like to think that there, there is going to be other books in the future. Every, a lot of people ask me that. Everybody's like, what's your next book going to be? And I'm, I always say, like, let me get through this book. Yeah. <laughs> just let, me... let this one release this Right now, much. I've been working a lot with, like, the marketing and, mm -hmm. and promoting of it. But, you know, things after you write the book, the work is over, but it's not. Um, you know, there's a whole nother world outside of that with just promoting it and marketing it and finding people, you know, that would, would support you. Uh, one of my, my endorsements that I'm really proud of, uh, her name's Dr. Justine Green. She's a four-time award-winning children's book author. Oh, wow. She does this series called Completely Me, and she herself actually has microsia, so that was even cooler when I found that out. Um, but she wrote me a really cool uh, endorsement, actually on the back of the book, beautiful colors in the book will catch your eye and the story will teach you a valuable lesson about understanding differences. That was just something that was pretty cool for me to yeah. have somebody of that like caliber commenting on my book in, in that way. How do you get people to comment on your book? You have to reach out, well, you know, and you're going to get some no's, probably more than you're going to get yeses, but I don't know, just you have to push through and persevere. And I mean, I've gone through like so much already with, with just everything with my son that it just, it seems like it's worth it. Yeah. It's all paying off now, yeah. coming together a little bit more. Imagine that there are other artists out there that are wondering how they should put themselves out there with their own work and find their own kind of thing to be doing. Do you have any advice for them? I would say, like, just stay true to, you know, your style and what inspires you um, because that's what, I think that's when you're going to create your best artwork. Mm. You know, when you have something like, my son is what inspires me that was my inspiration that i found and then even like my style uh you know i've gone through bouts where i'm like you know i could probably draw more realistic um you know i'm just trying to find my medium i love using watercolor um and i do a lot of like graphite pencil drawings too so probably both of those are are my medium medium of choice so any you know any new artist just stay true to your style and, and what inspires you should we look at some of these stuff? yeah so i mean i brought some of my illustrations from the book this is us at the beast, and it's a watercolor portrait. Um, and in the book, I'm trying to talk about how, you know, even though my son, you know, he has a disability, hearing loss, it doesn't stop him from doing anything like a normal kid would do. You know, he still goes to the beach. That, that was one. We have a lot of pets at our house. So I, I have two dogs. I have a cat. I have a horse. You name it, we have it. Uh, another uh, concept in the book was, you know, Jojo plays with his pets, you know, just, just like any other kid would. I had to include my dogs in the book. <laughs> it's so cute. Are all of the artwork in here, are they all watercolors? It's all watercolor. Most of them are based off of like real photos that I took of my son. I mean, I have a picture of him like lying in bed and drinking his bottle with the dog. Another thing in the book was, you know, jo Jojo can still travel to like faraway places. Did you go there with him? With COVID, mm -hmm. you can't go anywhere. I made this painting before I even was thinking about writing the book. Beautiful. My family is from Italy. We're from Abruzzo and I still have a lot of family there. 
the first person that bought the book was my cousin in in uh the town that they're from is Prato da Peninia. This is another Italy picture. The lemon trees, mm -hmm. that's another Italian kind of staple. I really just wanted to emphasize he could do anything just like anybody else. He can go any place. That's just a part of my culture that like if you're going someplace, that's where I would want to go. So I included that in the book. I'm in a lot of the pictures. The whole book is my son. I love my son so mm -hmm. much. All right. So this picture, it has some sign language in it, along with just showing people that Jojo could do anything just like anybody else. You know, he has one small difference. You know, he in the book it says he has one tiny ear. Microsia ca causes hearing loss, and I wanted to educate people on that. Sign language, ASL, is, you know, just something that goes along with having hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's such a beautiful thing. I'm trying to learn it myself. I'm not very good at it yet. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to learn the alphabet, and we do signs with Jojo a lot. He can do, um, he knows how to do the sign for more. Oh, that's so He awesome. could do that one, yeah, and he can say it a little bit, too. I wanted to include that in the book. The yeah, hands. I was just about to ask you what this says. But it spells out inspire. Oh. This is one of my favorite ones. I just, I love the colors that you used in it and everything. It's just so pretty. Thanks. I, I really, I like to use a lot of bright colors. Okay, is this the last one? Yeah, so this is actually the last picture in the book as well. It just talks about just being true to yourself and being unique, because not everybody is the same. And that's probably like one of the most beautiful things, in my opinion, you know, about the about the world just in general. Not everybody is the same. Um, and right now that's the ASL sign for love. So, Aww. yeah. And I wanted to include just like a diverse group of kids. And again, like just use the bright color scheme that I've used throughout the book. And yeah, I love the rainbow. It's Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Steph, for joining us on this episode of Making It Artisan Stories. If you'd like to see more of Stefania's work, you can find her contact information in the credits. Thank you to all of our viewers for watching this episode. We'll see you again.